Gig Gab, episode 418 for Monday, February 26th, for Pete's sake day, 2024. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab. Welcome back to Gig Gab. We are the show by, for, and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. Of course, I am Dave Hamilton. And today, my guest co host is drummer and the mix doctor himself, Daniel East. Dan, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming back. Yeah, man. I'm, I've been really excited about coming back. I, I just, I'm always so thrilled. And you know, I've heard every single episode since day one. So. I know. Yeah. I know it's, it's awesome having you here and, uh, and you like, I, I know it hasn't been that long, which is, which is great. Cause it means we get to talk again. Uh, you went off to Nam. You talked to us before you went to Nam, and now you have all the goodies. We're going to do gear gab galore and, uh, lots of other stuff too. So how yeah. was Nam? How, well, first of all, how are you? No, I'm I'm doing well, and and Good. actually, a lot of the things that have been going on that have been exciting have been through Nam or as a result of and sure. This it's uh, things are beginning to feel like music again, you know, uh, business wise. It's good. That's great. It's, it's been really exciting, and that's Nam, great. Nam was was definitely a pleasant surprise in some ways. Um, the the moment to give you an idea of like of all the things that happened while I was there, and there were there were some really cool ones. Sure. Um. I got to oh, I'm hitting my microphone. That's great. Um, oh, you're yeah. a professional, <laughs> but a professional. What is the question? <laughs> so, um, one of the really great highlights that really kind of calibrated my brain when I was there was Yamaha had took over what I guess was Gibson's ballroom on the upper level. Okay. And what they did was have an, a zone for each division. So drums had an area, band and orchestra had an area, guitars had an area. Uh, they had a, a really nice stage sort of at the back wall that was just really cool. But one of the moments of all this, I, I, they, I got a text you know, can you come down? Like, yeah, sure. I've been with Yamaha. You know, I've been Yamaha drummer for years, and yep, and I sound and all that stuff. So I, I go over and on stage is Nathan East, his oh. son Noah, who just Noah East, who just signed to Yamaha, Donald Barrett, who, you know, I mean, he's Lady Gaga's drummer and a million other things. Yep, uh, Greg Filling Gaines. Uh, I mean, this is like unbelievable. Yeah, and we're watching this. These guys just. Greg was a nice surprise and we're watching all this stuff happen and they play this whole set and they end the set with change the world. Right. Ah, uh, nice. And I mean, you, you can't get any closer to the original shy of having Clapton on stage with them. And it's just this moment. And I'm standing there at the, this Rivage PM three console on the side of the stage with their, with their guys taking this all in and it's kind of surreal because uh, I had had some time with Clapton years ago and, and it was a moment and the guy behind me goes, this sounds really so much like the original. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's cause that's the guy right there. Like this is, this is like Greg and Nate and everything. It was yeah. really cool. But it was one of those moments when you look around the room and you see this packed ballroom and the look on people's faces. And that to me was sort of the tell for Nam. The tell for Nam was that people were just happy to be there. They were wow. excited about like, what's going to happen? What's the show going to be? And these people were sort of milling around and kind of finding their way. And that was kind of the cool thing about it. Um, That's cool. You know, That's were, good. okay. So yeah. Okay. So yeah, it, it, said, it was, and that was like over the weekend, but I mean, it, even from minute one, I spoke to, and again, this is may not be for, you know, what everybody's reporting. I spoke to three different booths that told me on day one, they had taken orders for all of their inventory, like everything. Wow. Like everything was gone. Like they were like, we're, we're done. So now we're, we're taking orders with a lead time yeah right well that's that's amazing. a good thing 
Yeah. And the I, odd part about it is that there were not that many buyer badges. Like normally you see dealers and like, because that's what NAM used to be. NAM used to be about supporting the merchants. It was the sure. National Association of Music, Music Merchants. Right. It, it, it's now it's different. And people that are looking for it to go back to the way it was, it just will not be. It just doesn't exist anymore. However, what it's becoming and much more so than last year, and certainly dramatically more than the year before, which I did not go. The first time I did not go was the year they canceled. And then that, that sure. second yeah, of year, course. I did not go because there was no point. And I'm glad I didn't because there was no one there. This show about, in terms of attendance, was about half of what it was pre-COVID. Okay. Uh, I think pre-COVID which isn't, was Which I isn't think bad. Like, no, it's great. Like that's that's it, for, for conferences, it, it, I can tell you just, you know, across the conference industry, that's about normal. For yeah. attendance and, and to be it, half, and the, yeah, a really good quality of people were there. Yep, and yeah, even you, you, you lost the looky lose. Yeah, right. And even though you didn't see as many buyer badges, this posture that the organization has taken is really supporting the manufacturers when they need it. The supply chain issues were were certainly on everybody's mind. So there's something that kind of happened when I started to talk to some of the vendors and some of the manufacturers because it really didn't make sense for some of them to be there. And for example. The drum section was nothing. There were okay. a, a few of the Turkish symbols and a few accessory companies. And then Gretsch was set up with Jiwo with their new parent company from Germany. Yep. Uh, and then Yamaha obviously had, and Yamaha has the most unbelievable new hardware I will get to. I know. That. We're going to talk about that oh. soon. Yep. It's yep. spectacular. Okay. And so- in accessory land, it was cool. I got to go and and like Kickport had partnered with a company, and of course, I used to I used to do their marketing and art yeah. relations. I love Kickport, by the way. If you're if you're a drummer and you haven't uh, experienced what a Kickport can do for the sound of your bass drum, uh, just go do it. Or, or a cajon, a, that's or right. Other things, yeah. And right. the thing that's that was cool is that they're still using a lot of the packaging and the logo that I designed, the that's cool logo that I yeah. did. It was like I felt like the teacher meeting his students again, like coming back and like being so proud of what they've done. I I, uh, I had it was really a, cool a similar experience. I walked up to gosh, I'm gonna forget which company it was, uh, a booth at CES, and they had from 2012 an uh, of, you know a 12 year old award that we had given them from the mac observer which had i, I mean i was probably there when i when they got the that actual <laughs> award i might have been the person that handed it to them for all i can remember but it was cool it was like oh hey look at that that's a thing for those of who don't know i started mac observer but we sold it 2 years ago and so it was like oh look at that blast from the past like there's my logo of course i can go it's, to macobserver.com and still see my logo it still course. hasn't changed uh, but it's, it's which just is cool fun. yeah it's fun to see and it's fun to see that the the some of the things uh, as a quick example there was a time when i had been out to petaluma and talking with the with the the company at the time and they, we said, well, we, we should have more SKUs. In order to be distributed properly, we should have more products. Yeah. So each product has a SKU. So I said, well, well, what, what, let's take inventory. So we had the kick ports, we had the cajon ports. And I said, um, okay, what else? He's like, I don't know. So we started to go through a couple of the concept pieces and he had a bunch of the cutouts from the, uh, the beater pads. And I said, well, what do you do with these? They're perfect cutouts. They're perfect circles. He says, they go in the trash. I'm like, are you kidding? I use these now. Like I use it as a reinforcement or if I yep. don't want a whole pad, the pads are very thick, I'll use this. So we called them black eyes and it's a little bullseye with uh, a ring around. It's like a, a circle with a thing around it. And it's just a really nice durable piece. And if you don't want a big, thick, extra, yeah. um, you know, beater pad, and it worked fantastic. It, it was like this amazing, and they still sell them. That's great. This is just so much fun to see. Anyway, that was kind of cool. It, it didn't make sense for some of the companies to be there. Just in terms of the sheer cartage and staffing and noise issues. And you're, you know, you're into, you know, at the low end at probably 400,000 up to a million dollars. And there's no return on that investment. It just doesn't live there. Right. But- I can tell you a lot of those companies that didn't show were there. I had at least 
four people from DW come talk to me. Got I it. spoke to people from a ton of the guitar companies. Now, all that being said, they were there. They were either dipping their toe in the water or they were making deals and meeting people. Or yes, of course. That's a, yeah, that's it. how it works. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just because right. someone's not an exhibitor doesn't right. mean they don't have a presence. Oh, I, you know, and, and I think I, I want to get to the gear, but, but I'll, I'll wax for a moment here about what I've seen change or perhaps become more apparent at conferences in general is the, and this has always been a part of what conferences are. I've always considered it the most important part. And I think more people are coming around to this and it is the gravity that a conference provides to bring all of the people interested in a thing to one place. Even if there's not an exhibit floor, even if it's just, you know, sessions, it's all, it's more about the networking than it is. What booth did you set up? I, you know, I go to 100%. CES and I haven't, planned i i wind up on the show floor every year because i want to see lg's booth but that's really what i do on the show floor is see how lg has chosen to spend their money and show me their new tvs but that's not really all that relevant the things that are super relevant to me happen at restaurants or maybe in a meeting suite or you know random encounters that aren't really all that random it's the gravity that we're all in one city or one conference center for three days that's, that's right. what that's, conferences that's exactly are for. The point. That's, that's the, the point thing about this yeah. that made it different. The people that are looking for this, I've heard so many people complain about, oh, Nam isn't going to be living. If you're trying to get back to what was, it's not going to happen. What it is shaping up to be is really, really cool. The, cool. the community of musicians yep. is incredible. The, the wish that people have, the, the willingness to support the brands that they believe in. Nobody's looking for free stuff anymore. Those days are 20 years ago. Nobody sure. shows up. Like people complain about, oh, everybody wants to sign deals. And Maybe they do, but people understand that the, those days are, they're not even a few years old. This is like way pre-COVID. We're, we're yeah. Yeah, yeah. ancient history sense. now. Yeah. But in terms of what the show is becoming and the way that the organization seems to be getting behind the industry is really cool. Now with that, there's another thing because the, the networking component is awesome. It's great. It was wonderful to see a ton of people that of I haven't seen in a long time. What for better or worse, the reality is, is that a lot of the manufacturers had, that were waiting for supply chain to fill orders it's just not going to happen. And warranties are now three and four years in. That time is gone. So to wait for things to come in slow boated into the U.S. that just aren't going to be there seemed like it's time to, you know, to, um, uh, you know, to, to drop the dead weight and move on. And that's what they've done. So what was really cool about that, as much as it, that kind of felt disappointing in a way also is to see the new product and the amount of new product and the technologies that are being built without reliance on on some of the areas outside the US. And I'm not saying quality things don't come from outside the US. I'm not sure, saying sure. anything like that. I'm saying in terms of supply and demand and what is needed and what's come in. Necessity the and invention. Of new yeah. All right, so, so let's much let's get new stuff to see. Tell me and about try this. And play with. You mentioned Yamaha. We've talked about it. we've we've alluded to gear. Now let's talk about it. There, there was this you you put on your list this Yamaha hi hat stand. The MSRP is a thousand dollars. Yeah, street uh, price is not street but, price is like six hundred bucks. That's still right. a lot of freaking money that's for a, a hi hat stand, especially one that's only got two legs. But I like the idea of a two leg hi hat stand as long as it stands so talk to us about this thing <laughs> all right so this was amazing okay because i had the same feeling i'm like this is gonna have to absolutely blow my mind or i i you know i, yeah, I have plenty i can't of wrap work. my head around this yeah uh, yamaha i can't complain i love everything that they make sure. everything from jet skis to pianos to you know everything it, it drums obviously so what's special so about this thing why this is it worth 600 is, bucks 
this is their flagship hardware that goes with their new 90 or not new anymore, but the new 9D pedal yep. kick pedal. So it's the industrial steel. Okay. It's the wider, uh, the wider board for your foot. Got it. The feel of it is incredible. And one of the great things, that's the thing. One of the great things about it, having the two legs and they pivot out. So if you want it next to another pedal, your your legs can go to the back or to the side. You have complete control. You, It's noiseless. It's the most fluid feeling hi-hat pedal. It's that combination of being really, really durable, incredibly strong, and yet feels very light and flexible. It is absolutely a flagship product. I needed to be blown away, and I absolutely was. It was really impressive. They also, their clutch, and I I flat out asked about it, it's a quick release bottom on the clutch oh, the way the Remo had done. Yeah, okay. But the Remo is a spring-loaded. This is not. This is How a, do they a do it? And if, go. Oh, it, so you just like half a twist or something, yep, and off it comes? It's, it's, it's a little T, and you move it through the grooves, and in it goes. And, and I'm telling you, Dave, so the good news is we're going to see some of these things m like trickle down into the, the, the not flagship line eventually right. too. Yep. Okay. I, I would think so. And yeah. they've always done that. And the, it was a really cool thing that wasn't a massive product. And they, they have a new little sequencer and they have some really cool sure, sure. stuff. They had some firmware stuff, but for drum world, like, acoustic drum world yeah man it, it was it, it you would not imagine that a hi-hat stand would be as impressive as this thing is and it's like well it, they know that thing. it has to be for wow. for 360 bucks or sorry I, I'm, I'm saying 360 because i'm looking yeah. at the 360 memory lock while i'm looking at the website while we're supposed to be talking um for 980 bucks or 580 bucks whatever it works out to be so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's That's just cool. so smooth and so quiet and so durable. But that wider foot plate. I can see that making a big just difference. Incredible. Yeah. It feel when you sit down and you play on this kit and I, I will, you, you know, I play out. barefoot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this yeah. is yeah. this is just I, I, te I teach drum lessons, okay? Sure, and I have students and I teach online and we do all this stuff. And one of the things that that I'm really serious about with my students is where you put your feet and how you plant your feet so your posture is correct and so you learn the right way to do things when, yep. you're, when you're playing one of the things that i try to particularly with the younger ones is to make sure that the top of their foot finds the sweet spot that way you're you're able to as if you were running up and down stairs as opposed to uh you know uh, tapping your feet to music. You know, you want yeah, right. to have to find that, that magic spot on this thing. I couldn't find a way around. Like it was so natural and so comfortable. It doesn't look particularly fancy. There's nothing elaborate. The settings, sure, sure. the controls aren't crazy. It's just a really, really solid, smooth, fluid, beautiful piece. Uh, would cool. I pay a thousand dollars for it? No. No, but, but you can buy that clutch for 80 bucks MSRP, right? So already the parts yeah. are, yep. Okay. You'll you'll see this will come together. We'll put right, links. So we'll put links in the show notes for everything yeah. that we talk about. It's at giggabpodcast.com. You can also go there to sign up for the mailing list. And what's cool about the mailing list is when we publish an episode, we send you via email all the show notes that have all of these links right there. So you can just click in your email, which is nice if you're listening like while you're driving or whatever, so that you don't have to remember. We'll just do that for don't you. Don't read the email while you're driving. No, that's the thing. Listen <laughs> while you're driving. Read the email later. Dan, always here with the excellent advice. All right. Well, you know. What's next on the gear so, gab list here? So because I, you know, because I miss Paul. Yeah. Um, I really miss Paul. Well, he, he will. We, we are recording this a little bit out of sync. He will have been on the show the week prior to this being released. So I'm really excited uh, uh, yeah, about, I, about I, that and, and for that. So, yeah. But I, I would be remiss if I didn't hit some cool guitar stuff early on. Yep, because last year when we did this, we did guitars last. And he was like, what about guitars? That's fair. So That's fair. Yep. So one of the companies that I have respected since I was a kid is Peterson. And they make strobe tuners. They make orchestral the the I think the finest some of the finest uh, tuners on the planet. They okay. go back in time to the 
earliest days, it was a big giant box and it had strobes and a dial and you would set it and the strobes would align and that's how you knew you were in tune. Sure. They started to make, they had an app, which was great, which I've used for years. Um, and they started to make these clip on tuners. And I said, you know, I would wait until they got it together. I want to see this thing. And they had, a, they've, they've had them for a while, Okay. but they have now, this is an HDC, they call it. It's a full color, much better display. Oh. And one of the cool things about this tuner is that it does the, uh, buzz Freighton tunings. And it does so that like, if you have the frets, if you have the hardware that when you bear down to do the tunings, it doesn't change your, your tuning. There are presets for all different keys, oh. all different instruments, basses, guitars. You can do whatever you want with this thing. The, the only thing that people ever complained about Peterson stuff is, is because it's so precise and because it's a strobe style, it's not just like a needle that shows you like sharp flat or whatever. Sure. Sure. This yep. Actually, if you really want to make sure that you're in tune and you don't need, you don't want to rely on your harmonics or any of that stuff. Yep. This is one of the most accurate tuners I have ever used. It is beautiful. It is easy to see on stage. It sits rock solid. It fits on any instrument you can throw it on. Yeah. They say that it's got uh, an ultra wide clamp, which goes up to uh, a little over an inch, which is yeah. a lot considering this thing is tiny and the colors, at least part of the reason for the different colors, as they say on the website is so that you get to pick the color you see most easily on stage. Yeah. 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 And this is this is true for cellists as well. Sure. This is a company whose background is making sure that everything isn't just in tune, it has to be perfectly in tune. Yep. And if you and they're they're I think they're like 60 bucks or something or 70 bucks whatever they are. I don't know what they are street price, but Yeah, the MSRP is 80, so yeah, take yeah. take yeah, take 15 20 okay. bucks off of that. Yep. Another thing that absolutely just and this was kind of cool. I because I had uh, both a press badge and exhibitor badge and whatever else, sure, sure. I always have. I always have at least yeah, three or four badges. Way, I have an artist yeah, badge, exactly. all that stuff. That I sure. walk around. So before the show opens, I had a client who had given me an exhibitor badge, and I got to go and see Kemper's new, their new. Um, uh, I think it's called a profile. It's called the profiler. Yeah. It it's is like a, the, a modeler. Is that essentially it's not what it just is? just a modeler. Okay. This, first of all, this thing is one of their smallest. So Kemper stuff is traditionally, you know, a, a, an aircraft carrier. Yeah. This, that's what the guitar guys call it. The big giant pedal yeah, boards. It's a big, that have big like monster pedal board. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Even their, their, and their stuff is great. Kemper stuff is great. This thing is, is the size of, uh, like, I mean, it I looks like a wide pedal. It's it's pretty, yeah. It's yeah. pretty small. Yeah, four banks of effects. It's iOS compliant uh, compatible, so you can program the thing. But the build quality on this, Dave. I mean, you know, guitar players are not easy on their gears, on their gear. Uh, not that drummers are, <laughs> but this thing is absolutely rock solid build. Every knob, every switch, every everything is absolutely a tank. The sound of it, which to me is obviously my first concern, is really spectacular. And it's really one of their most simple to operate. It's it's a, just a few simple controls. That's how it should be, man. Oh, it sounds so good, man. Huh? It sounds if you, especially if you like the Kemper sound. Yep. Kemper stuff yep. has a very specific. It, it's, they do have their own thing. Yeah, yeah. But very the, cool. The effects processing is just clean and fast, and it sounds like the Kemper amp sound. Yep, that was really cool to see and to check out. I just had so much fun just playing with it when the show. Nobody was there. You're right. So the guy was right. just like, have right. at it, man. He's like, you know how to run through this? I'm like, yes, yeah. I do. I got you. He's yep. like, go, <laughs> do whatever you want. And I, I sat and I talked to him. I asked him all these questions. And it, it, it's a really, really solid box. It just sounds great. Uh, I, I was just Looks like it's got uh, like both quarter inch and XLR out. So balanced yeah. and and, a, and it's got a, a an out or an input for a, a, a wah pedal. 
Right. Uh, so, and, but here's yeah, the thing the about things. using That's it. Great. Okay. And yeah. this is the thing, because we can talk about gear. I want to give this a little purpose. In the in this age of in ears that we as we yeah. all talk about, and I by the way I did listen to every in ear company that was there. Um, it, conversation for another day. Okay. Um, but I I heard everything. I always do. I always stay as current as I can. Sure, sure. The thing that makes this Kemper piece really stand out to me is that as people have switched from you know upright pianos and and Hammond B3s to Nord stages and people have moved from you know uh you know Marshalls or or Black Star amps or whatever into modelers and a lot of people are using Helix and the Pod Go and stuff like that. Yep. Um and drums have now moved in that direction as well and the drums have gotten a lot better and I did check out a bunch of those drums. Uh, have not really changed my thought from last year on the F note drums, but okay. uh, I did listen to and try a few. And I have a new kit coming uh, in two weeks, which I can't talk about yet. No, another reason um, to get together when you can. So, yeah, so yeah. we'll talk about that at some point. But the thing that I really thought in terms of application of this Kemper profiler is that because of the amp modeling, because of everything that it that it's capable of and the image that it, it is capable of producing, if you are playing in, a, in an excuse me in an environment where you need a speakerless stage, we need to do this, not have to do you know like the, you, yeah. you have to be yeah required. you need a and silent you really stage yeah want to have that level of control uh, and House of Worship is a perfect example. Um, that a lot of the guys are using helix pedal or yeah. helix boards and yeah. and the same thing in pod goes i think the pod go is the best bang for the buck there is interesting i think the sound quality is incredible the stereo image is incredible they the effects are great and they're easier to use uh as an amazing piece what this does is that it gives you not just your effects pedals but it gives you the modeler with it yep so I, I also like the UAD pedal. Their amp modeler pedals are great. But this thing, if you want one box on the floor and you want to sound like you and you want to hear your pickups come to life and you want all your control of your processing and everything, especially actually for, for a church gig where you're only playing four songs, you know, whatever, yeah, right. five songs. Right. It's perfect. It's, it's and 700 it's, bucks MSRP. That's not uh, bad. It's unbelievable. That's it's half I mean, the price of a lot of that stuff. I know. So. Yeah. Okay. Next item. Yes. So the guys at Groove Gear who make all kinds of funky cases and bags. I use their personal bags. In fact, in fact, sitting right here, I keep my Don't hit your microphone and again. my earplugs. Yeah. This is their little their little baby one. And I keep my uh my my we'll, we'll put links uh, to all this stuff. My, it, yeah. It's just this is just a it's a little bag. That, that yeah, Dan's this got. is my yeah, little. It's his onstage my, purse. So yeah, basically, yeah. I keep ears and cables and odds yeah. and ends. Okay, they came up with a drum rug that's not a drum rug. This thing is like a strip that goes under each leg. What? It 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 goes under your throne, under the kick, and then two side pieces, and it comes out, and you can add the extra pieces to it, and once they lock in. And they connect. You don't need a big drum rug anymore. What? And you know, you know me. I'm not only skeptical. I'm like, prove it. Yeah, prove like it. You, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Have yeah. To show me. And I sat on this thing on a on a floor, and it's pretty cool, man. <laughs> it like, it, for, but they don't they don't lock bucks. into each other, right? They they well, just. They, they can't, you can, you can tether them, but you don't really need to. You basically are putting a skid mat under everything. Okay. It's really cool. I, I, huh. I don't, I think. How come no one's for, never done? How come this is the first time this has been done, right? Like, yeah, I, it, the, the, when you, when you see it, there, there are some givens to this. Okay. One is that you're going to be sort of on a stage type thing. Yes, surface, you're right. Okay? Yeah, you're not you're not on if grass or something. Right. Yes, if you're right. on portable staging, even better because that's got a little grip to it. You have yep. a little you know yep. rubberized top to it, but it it's pretty pretty reasonably connected, and especially for the uh, for the kick and the throne, which is what everybody complains that moves the most anyway. 
So that was really, really cool. Um, How, so what's under the throne? Is it just more of the same yeah, kind you of? Just, yeah, you, you're, basically, you're basically just giving yourself a connection from front to back. Yeah. Um, it's really, the throne doesn't really move. In fact, I don't ever, I don't think I've really had much of an issue ever with a throne moving. No, it's the kick feet. that drives around or the hi hat pedal that drives around. And the, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's the slide thing. Yep. Because uh, you're, because you're hitting it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. So is, is it perfect? It's not perfect. But if you don't want to drag a, a giant drum rug around with you anymore, uh, this is great. I mean, this is. I, well, and, and I can also see this, like, if you. If the visual of a drum rug is not applicable or not ideal for whatever it is you're doing, then this thing solves that because it's now right. just drums on whatever stage surface you have. So, yeah, yeah. that's really what it huh. doesn't do. It doesn't catch the the stick shrapnel that we all No, produce. And as a barefoot drummer, I kind of right. like knowing that the rug that's there is mine and I brought that's it from home. Right. Like there's yeah, that. I, if for I sure. put any like if I put my towel down on my rug. Yes. I know it's I know it's my slime that's yeah, uh, it's on, it's you know, like <laughs> Yes. 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 And that's the thing. You know, that's a right. thing. Right. So okay. that's really that's the only like that that was my initial hesitation about this. I, at first I thought, wait, this is amazing. And then I was like, ah, but I don't I, I wanna I wanna be able to wanna use this, but can I? Like how right. will I feel? But again, for like a theater show or something where the band's on stage and the, the look of a drum rug is not right or for or a some quick tear down, quick tear if you down. Have, yes. you know, if you're a support act or whatever. Yes. The other thing about this is, if you if you are doing larger scale gigs, you want you're not going to want to use this, but as a backup, it's killer. Uh, well, that's the other thing the is throw this. Car well, I would put this seconds. in my just in case. You see. Yep. And then if I forget a rug, well. I, at least my yeah. stuff's not going to be driving all over creation. Yeah. But it, yeah. I mean, I was, like I said, I was surprised when I actually sat down huh. and, and felt the thing. How oh, this is fun. Soft. Oh, this okay. is so good. Okay. Okay. So this is to, to, to not totally drum out or guitar out. So one of the other things that was a really nice moment was that my buddies at stage ninja Love were back stage. Ninja. They've been gone for a while. I, I met them when they first, the two, best buddies that grew up together started the company and i've been involved with them since day as you know because you use their stuff i do so, use it i gotta i gotta I mean, get that goes like back to like I, I have i still for my tablet use my original tablet mount that i got from them one of the feet of it has broken off so i my tablet is held uh, by one little foot and you know what it works totally fine yeah, and the only time i think about well. ordering a new one is when i'm on stage and I really should just get another one, and then I don't because I'm busy doing other things or like in the middle of a podcast. But you're about to tell me about the thing that I'm going to order, aren't you? Yeah. So they they actually did they actually did a really smart thing in business. So when the market kind of shifted for them, they were producing these giant retracted. You know, their big thing that they got famous for was retractable cables. Right. You had an XLR cable right. and you had a hundred feet or 75 feet or whatever, and you would leave the gig, you go done. Yep. Yep. You save 20 minutes wrapping cables. Yep. They even put them together. You know, you put six of them together in like an empty, you, you take an old wedge and you could load them in next side by uh. side and, and just do a whole drum kit. Like, you know, you could put eight of them or 10 of them together and, and then to just go. when you're done, you're done. You save time. They did power cables. They did Ethernet cables. They did um, USB. Everything you can think yeah. of USB cables. The power. So I've done gigs with them. The power cables, the 150 footers, they're big. You you basically put it on the sides sides of the stage where you put your mains if you're doing a yeah. if, if you have that kind of a date and you run them back to your distro. And when you're done, you don't sit there and wrap doing this thing. Like, a, like you're, you're, not, you're not doing it like a garden hose anymore. <laughs> and you're done. Yep. And you, you literally wait for it to coil up and you're out the door. And it, it saves so much time. And the build quality is incredible. All top components, every piece of these things, the build is incredible. So they had that. The XLRs are amazing. Great quality cable, great quality everything. So then they had these clamps. And they had made uh, this incredible gooseneck which a, a company has has copied literally from them 
but it's not worth fighting the fight. It was easier, I guess, to license it or whatever they did because it is the most rock solid, you know, gooseneck type clamp I've ever used in my life. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And you can actually separate it and reconnect it and make it longer, whatever. Sure. The, the actual clamp that they use is the strongest and rubber interior, then vinyl coated on the actual uh, ends of it is super, super strong. So when they came out with a bunch of different products, they now have separated the two. So now there's Ninja Cable. There is a Ninja oh, Cables company and then it. Stage Ninja or Ninja Clamps is one and Stage yep. Ninja Cables is the other. Something got like it. that. Got I think it. that's what it is. And so the clamps now, they have redesigned. They, in fact, I was there. It was kind of a weird accident. They made a little, it, it, in the iPhone, like seven days or six or whatever it was, they had made a little, a little, uh squeezing clamp and it had a nice little gooseneck on it. It worked great. I still have it. it works sure. great. Um and then phones got bigger and then iPads got smaller. Yep. And they had the minis and then they did all this stuff. So now they have changed the line. They now have this new heavy duty middle clamp that does a Pro Max or that size whatever samsung calls iPhone, it, which yep. i don't know yeah yeah like the, the, the samsung the larger, tab or whatever yep it does the ipad mini it does all this stuff but the again the the tactile appeal of this thing is just awesome yeah they're, they it they just feels work comfortable yeah it's so solid yeah. and the one that i have that i use i have actually on my hi-hat stand and I record i don't even use it for cues or anything i actually use it to record yeah the thing doesn't move no it doesn't, it's a, it doesn't I mean, move i you know, I have a drummer. That's crazy. I have done uh, like theater gigs where I put the score, you know, on my iPad mini and clamp it to my hi hat stand, and it's good to go. And I'm constantly, you know, with a finger because I don't use a foot pedal to change pages because my feet, right. it turns out, are busy. And uh, <laughs> you know, imagine that. <laughs> imagine, yeah. <laughs> And, and so I just use my finger, which is, you know, it's way easier than turning a page. I've learned how to do it. It's totally fine. But I'm constantly tapping the thing with my fingers, sometimes harder than others. If it's like at a quick moment where I got to like tap the screen to advance right. to the next page. And the, like, to your point, the thing doesn't move. It's, it just, it does what it does. It's, and that's the end really, of it. It's yeah. really cool. It's great. So that was, that was really nice. It was nice to see them back. It was nice yeah. to reconnect with them. I would love to, to get more involved with them, to be quite honest. I, I think they're an amazing company. They're, they are they're great the company. nicest yeah. guys. The quality. I, I know a so lot of good. listeners use them. Yeah. It's, it's <sighs> nice to see them. I, I was worried about them, like not seeing new products coming out sometimes is an indicator that n no more products will come you know right. and so I, i'm glad to see this because it yeah it it it's they moved into commercial they yeah i get it they saw yeah. what was happening yeah, they 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 you know and it protects both brands too yep, which is totally. smart. uh all right so let's move into a little more because because you've had such awesome pro audio guests lately <laughs> uh it's been so cool i i well you know i'm i've been loving it um, you know it's interesting we had you know brad maddox on again last week and mm -hmm. um there's some other pro audio folks that I've been talking with and the feedback that we've gotten from that Brad Maddox episode. And it, it wasn't last week when this comes out, it's last week when I recorded this with Dan. So my apologies, but I think it was episode four, 15, four, 14. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes. You know, he does sound for, you know, all these A-list people. And even he was saying, I don't know how much my advice is going to be helpful to folks in clubs. I'm like, leave that up to me. And sure enough, yeah. like, th th like I loved all this advice that he had, and I've heard from so many of you that you did too. So we're, we're not going to do that every week. Don't worry. Yeah, email Dave. But Feedback yeah. at gig gap podcast. I can't That's it. Like, but but yeah. we will have more people like Brad, and we'll have Brad back too, uh, because there's things we didn't get into that also apply to those of us who who aren't playing stadiums or big arenas right. like there's so here's a quick sidebar to that point okay because yeah. you know every time i listen to the show if i'm working out or whatever i'm doing when i'm listening to the show sure. i will yell and come up with ideas and text you and as i think paul mentioned once send ridiculously long emails with yes. all my notes and thoughts we love it yeah yeah i mean it's it's 
just what rolls through my mind. One of the things that I thought was really cool to that point is how to let some of the pro audio things that I have done, that he has done, that a lot of the guys have done over the years do work in, in the clubs and in, in smaller venues. One of the tricks that I happen to really believe in, and this is something maybe to mention to him is using pink noise in a small venue. If you have your own PA and you don't shoot the room, as we say, yep. if you don't know what you're working with, if you don't understand and you're just blasting your same settings and, and you're, you're trying to throw it together and you don't know what your environment is, once you do it a couple of times, it's really easy. Most of the little consoles, even the, you know, any digital console is going to have a noise generator. Yep. And all you need is a quick and dirty way to do it is is just with an RTA app and a little they make little microphones there's a company in fact well, and most remember. most mixers also have RTA built into them too that's right oh so, especially now yeah yeah and and even real time analyzers RTA, folks this and, is that's what an RTA and, is uh, right. uh, and the audio tools app by the way has now uh, has had for a long time a smart tools upgrade i think it's 50 bucks and you can add to audio tools their their smart smart is rational acoustics it's it's uh sam burko's product his baby who's one, one of the great audio legends who's who, who i am fortunate enough to count as a friend of many many years who taught me a lot about audio and how the physics of sound work and and how it's energy and how time relates to hard EQs and things like that and where latency occurs. And so one of the things that I've learned to do if I'm doing an arena or if I'm doing whatever I'm doing, if it's a club, even some clubs have the little, you know, the, the little, I don't love them, but the little DBX, yeah. um, you know, um, you know, crossover kind of a setup. It's, it's pretty simple. And actually, you know, you, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not, you know, you're, you just want to find your peaks and valleys. But if you realize that you're in a room that's very reflective and you can take your, your mains EQ and tighten that up a little bit, that's the kind of stuff that, that translates really well from pro audio, pro audio down into, into everyday, you know, working musician. And, and we'll put uh, a link like, to this app, this audio tools app in there too. Really, yeah. It, yeah, it's great. It's I, really I, I cool. also should apologize as happened with Brad, Dan and I got talking before we started recording and I did not hit record on the video portion of this. So the video will never uh, see the light of day, but that's, that's just going to be how it is. So. Uh, the audio is all good. Like we're, you should have worn pants, Dave. Well, I didn't need to. It turns out that's right. Now you didn't need to. It's now perfect. I didn't need to. It's totally okay. Fine. So in the pro realm, because we get I super super nerding out, and I, I, this was this was one that you didn't have to nerd out on. Okay, this was so I went to the I went to the global media day thing, which was one of the smallest they've ever had, but it was worth going to because of this. The coolness factor on this is off the charts. The, the, this company, Sound Devices, which is, is a very respected company, their Astral products for wireless are, are really world-class. It's, it's a not for everybody. It's a certain level, and you sure. really have to need this. What they came out with in their wireless for their A20 receivers and stuff is – an RF scanning LED display on each channel of the rack. Super high contrast, what? super easy, click and go. It is absolutely, aside from the fact that it sounds incredible, which is a given in pro audio. If it doesn't sound amazing, you're done. Sounds spectacularly good, but this is absolutely beautiful. It, it, it's easy to see. It checks all the boxes in pro. It has to be sounding great. It has to be pro built. So this quality. is for all your wireless mics. Is that a, is this, that what this, this is? is? Your, this is your this is your your wireless uh, your wireless receivers. Receivers, yeah. Your your the um, belt belt. Yeah. Well, the transmitters it's, it's, and the receivers. I would assume. Yeah, right? I yeah, mean, okay. they, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're wireless is whatever you're using in what direction yeah. you're using it. Yeah. The the tactile appeal of this thing huh. is when you. I mean, the A twenties are great. This rack and the picture on their website does not do it justice. Uh, it is when you see 
the the wireless frequencies come up and spike and everything it's it, it's a yes or no you're done in oh, a that's great. margin a fraction of the time yeah, okay yeah. i don't want to totally nerd sure. out on that yeah, but yeah. it's it's a fant- if you're you working at that level for you know referees or for for whatever yep. okay Allen and heath and a couple other companies uh, yamaha did it last year we talked about the dm series Alan Heath came out with a compact version of the Avantis. Okay. Oh. The Avantis console, which has a ton of capability and, and it, where it falls short for the, for the average person, you probably are fine. This, this little baby model, this compact, the solo, if you were, Let's say I, I know you talked about on the show like how venues are starting to have capability for live stream. Yeah. If you want to run a split and have uh you know have this as your broadcast mix, this gives you full, full, full mix capability. If you want to do um, you know, uh, for, forget for a club or a restaurant or any of that stuff, this is all the muscle, half the size. And it still has just a ton of power. It so it's has, got a screen and twelve faders, is what this yep. thing is. So and it it is the same build quality as the Avantis. So it's rock solid. Okay, so the it's called it's called great. the Avantis Solo, is what yes. we're talking about here. And huh. it's and it's not cheap. I mean, it's not. It's it's got to be. It's got to be eight or nine thousand dollars, I believe. Yeah. But this is a professional full scale you know digital mixer with all the bells and whistles it has a ridiculous amount of control huh. uh i mean to have a, a 42 bus console with 64 inputs and 12 full you know okay so you it, still get your full 64 inputs and all of that the only thing that's that's reduced is the footprint of this which means you get 12 less faders but other, and it's other than 96 that, yeah. kilohertz out of this little this yeah, is, yeah yeah this is the this That's is cool. the full deal. So you can record with it. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. It's great. I think it's great for broadcast mix. I yeah. I, I was really impressed with it. Huh. I had a really fun a little a little sidebar story. Uh, where I'm at Alan Heath and a couple of the reps that I knew were there and a couple of the salespeople and we're kind of chatting away and a and a guy had come by and asked to to see one of the uh, in terms of actually mixing was there something that they could kind of show him he was kind of struggling with some of his vocalists and the rep looked at me and he goes you want to take this and i said yep i got you <laughs> so we walk over to the they had a d live uh 7000 uh, 7, yep and i showed him as i'm taking him through this the guy is looking at me and he tells me he's explaining the problem and i'm trying to figure this out and and what's happening is my background vocals they just they don't come to life and they're competing and it's and i can't get it in out front and blah 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 and i was like i said i said are you doing stereo what are you doing and i asked him to, anyway the bottom line is i take him through this and and i'm showing him this trick that i do to get the background vocals to really have their own life and one of the things that i'm a firm believer in when i mix is you don't put any two things in the same spot in your image in stereo. So when you're panning, you don't want any two things to, so if you're, if you look at it like an analog clock and you have one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, whatever, 10 o'clock, nine o'clock, everything has its place. I don't need, like even with the podcast, you, you and I are not in the same spot in the stereo mix. We're very close to each other because if I went hard left and right, you folks listening would hate it. But right. we're just a little it's the separate. Same with the ears too. Yes. Yeah. With mixing in ears, if you can get them stereo. No, yeah. Yeah. And you don't want anything really hard panned, except if you have two things exactly the same. So if you have like two acoustic guitars, and you only need them percussively, not for pitch. Yeah. For your ears, you bring them down, and you can have them harder. But I don't like anything really hard, hard panned. No. And so, I also, when I'm mixing my ears, if I have the opportunity to do it with stereo, nothing yeah. gets to live dead center nothing well, no. well, you, even you, even mean, snare drum is is a hair off of dead sure. center it's a hair to the left because it's in your brain is is Correct. not in the center Correct. it's it should always be as you see it anyway so i'm going through this thing with this guy we're we're, we're standing there and i'm taking him through the wait, console wait, what, and you, you're gonna share your tip was your tip for highlighting background vocals the the stereo no, thing or are you gonna no, get to but that i mean it's part of it there's okay a, there's you'll a get thing to that, that all right great basically so the, the short answer is is that 
where he had five vocals on stage, two were leading, three were BGVs. Okay. The three BGVs go on a BGV bus with its own reverb. Okay. And then there, I slightly run the output delays, you know, 20 some odd, 20 to 30 milliseconds so that they thicken up and they sort of chorus out a little bit. And then in the Allen and Heath, they have a plugin called Double Double which is a sort of detuning doubler with a really nice stereo image. And if that goes on the bus or on the input, you can use it as an insert. What happens is, is that your two leads can be, as you see them, you know, 11 o'clock, one o'clock or whatever it is. And then the background vocals wrap around and you can add a little more air at 11, 12 K, a little, a little boost in there. And let's, you're using mics that already have that in it. Yeah. And then you're thickening them up. And the trick is that you don't want to hear the effect. So when you, right. when you use the bus is for your background vocals, and you create this, this round, sort of slightly wider stereo image, when you have that many vocals, you bring up the effect until you can hear it, and then you back down one dB. Yep. As soon as you can hear it, it's too much. Because in the context of the mix, then what happens is, is that your, your two main vocals are sort of 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and then the background vocals, without being hard panned, you're, you're no more than just beyond either one if you have yeah yeah six it's even depending on how many you have but because they're on their own bus and you can then have uh a little bit of of a uh, a bus compression thing happening and actually the d live has a pretty solid bus compressor built into it just a little you know just a little grit long long attack short release yeah and just a little bit just to 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 put a little glue on it and then the the lead vocals will absolutely come to life and you'll feel those vocals just wrap around it you know as if it was you know on TV it's a, it's a simple trick anyway yeah, i go I like through this trick. whole thing he's yeah. taking video and all this stuff and when we're i kind of finished and i let him hear it in the cans we're playing around with it and he goes, man, thank you. Shakes my hand. And then there's applause. And I turn around there are like 35, 40 people. You, you gave a little went class through the whole thing. So I got the whole school. It was kind of fun. That's great. Um, but I, they, I, I do that here on, uh, for, for producing the show. I, I compress us both and I put reverb. I've been doing this yeah. for 19 no, years. It's great. Yep. I put a touch of reverb and I bring it down one DB because we're not in the same room. You're, no. you know, I'm in New Hampshire. Your brain, you're not. It has to make sense to your brain. Correct. This is something I've been doing with yours for years. Correct. Most people, if they're listening to this show in their cars or in, in AirPods or whatever beats or whatever yeah. headphones or whatever sunlight or whatever they're using to listen, your brain wants space. You, you had the perception of space. And if you can hear it, it's too much. You do a yes. great job of that. It's Thank an amazing you. thing. When I mix ears, if I'm a monitor engineer and not doing front of house, I always wear the same ears because I have stupid amount of in Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I want to wear as close to what the person I'm mixing is wearing so that I can, you know, you're on JHs or you're on UEs, whatever. you're on 64s, whatever it is, uh, C CTMs or Future Sonics, whatever it is. It doesn't make any difference. I have to I have to hear what you're hearing as close to what you're hearing as I can get. And one of the things that I do, and one day we should do a whole show on this. We've talked about it since I've been on the show, is is a a a a proper starting from zeros way to mix ears. Oh well let's do it. Because yeah, we'll we'll, we, we we'll make that the next episode. Yeah, not not next week, but the next no, one you're on. Yeah, yeah. But but you have a way of doing it that I think is really interesting. I've done it since nobody knew what in-ears right. were. Um, and the way that I do it now is is different from the way I had done it 10 years ago sure. and different than the way I had done it 25 years ago. So we'll, we'll share our I things and we'll, we'll yell at yeah. each other about it. Yeah. But I have a pretty cool way. In fact, I'm, I'm talking I'm talking to a couple of people about doing some, uh, uh, some videos to make available to the churches uh, and all of Houses of Worship because – there's this thing just turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. And it, it's it, it, what's happening is that it's, there's some backlash and there's some, the potential for legal problems is, is greater. Um, uh, so yeah. having this available, it's, it's really not that tough, but it, it doesn't make sense because your brain says, I can't hear that. I'll make that louder. And that's not going to work. 
anyway, that was kind of that was kind of a fun thing to see some of these these mixers. Um, a, a really a nice thing about Nam is is the sort of you know the 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 whiplash moments when you get to see all the people there and uh pete wentz was there and mark ronson was there victor nice. Woon was there uh teddy campbell who's been all over tv lately yep. uh, was there eric moore stevie wonder's always there um it was really cool to see uh, my buddy robert scoville who ah. i wish i could say i was closer friends with but when i was younger he was really i know you talked about him on the show yeah recently. But, uh, Rob, for, for everybody that that doesn't immediately remember that name. If you listen to the story that Brad Maddox recently told on this show about how, uh, he was out at a baseball game with rush and Alex made, made Brad and another guy sign autographs along with Getty Lee. It Robert Scoville was that other guy. He yeah. did sound for rush for about eight years. And I, I, I got to reach out to him and thank him as I, I, I think I was probably 17 years old, uh, watching a rush concert. And at the New Haven Coliseum, and I, there were, we our seats were right next to the soundboard, and I saw there was a little you know a little staircase up to the like you know three short steps up to the soundboard, and I saw people kind of going up there, and I noticed Will Calhoun was up there, believe it or not, and yeah. it was like oh that's interesting, okay it makes sense he's up there, and then it kind of looked like other people were up there too, and so as seventeen year old kids, my buddy and I kind of walked over maybe about a third of the way into the show, we were only five or six songs in. Walked over to the stairs and we're like, hey, can we come up there? And they were like, sure. Now, I have no idea why Robert Scoville allowed this. We were <laughs> responsible. We were respectful, like all of right. the things. But he didn't know that we were going to be. We were 17-year-old kids. Right. And then at one point, he handed me the headphones. And he's like, hey, do you want to listen on this instead of just in the house? And I was like, this what? What has happened here? You know, right. this is me out seeing my favorite band as a teenager. And now the sound engineer hands me the headphones and I, I listened to half the show on, on the cans back and forth. It was such he a, has that way. what he's, a wonderful he, guy though. Yeah. But that's yeah. why when I say he's like my buddy, he's like, we're not like drinking buddies or anything. Sure. Like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> he's a guy who I've known since I was really, really young. Yeah. And in, when I was working at future Sonics, he was the most common sense approach to audio. And I learned a lot from him. And then when he got involved with Avid and helped them develop their, their live consoles and all that, I, I would call him or I'd email him and yeah. I'd run into him. And uh, when he, you know, he was with Prince and he was Tom Petty and what he did with Tom Petty was incredible. I mean, this is the guy who, who came up with, although he denies it, the concept of virtual sound check. Oh, no being kidding. Able to record, you know, one to one, you know, all of every output into what I guess was an ADAT back then, and <laughs> good and, for him. You yeah. know, was able to to do this, and I and I mean, we all use that today. I mean, yeah. in concept, you know, I mean, people have been recording shows for a long time. People have been multi tracking shows, but this idea of having Playing a it back the system. capable, yeah, you know, it, it made your sound checks incredible. And even though it's you know, it's uh, I use it every every week i mean i i, I can tell you that no it, it yeah i i don't have a setup where i could use it reliably uh but the times that i have it makes uh, it it's a huge difference no it's amazing it's yeah. amazing what it what it what it does for you and yeah. and there there are advantages and disadvantages because you're obviously not using your preamp you're, it's a trim thing but all right so um, we're at about an hour here Jones, dan yeah yeah okay, so, so let, let's get I'll, to I'll this let, up, let's get like, to some yeah yeah if there's if there's a couple of highlights let's let's yeah, do that i mean yeah, yeah. audio like i said audio guys buford jones got parnelli uh he was david bowie's guy uh, you know skinner pink yeah, floyd yeah uh pooch van druten was there who who hasn't just is again one of the most common sense audio guys these guys that that were really instrumental in shaping me when i was a kid yep some of whom i still kind of know some sure. of them i i've lost touch with some of them won't know me from adam or remember me and some of them have been so so generous and kind to me over the years um to to see everybody there even briefly and to just kind of to be able to, you know, say, Hey man, you know, you, you really, I wouldn't be where I am today yeah. if it wasn't for the fact that we like hauled a bunch of road cases together, you know, in, in the late eighties, early nineties, whatever. Uh, Scoville was one of them. 
Yeah. Pooch is one of them. Um, certainly, um, Buford Jones is another one of them. So that those were great moments at the show. Um, did you see? Really, did you see any fun music while you were there? Well, the the music. <laughs> Did I, did I open a, a can of worms? <laughs> I posted a video of every year. I post a video of walking through the Hilton lobby. Yep. Because it's, there's no hotel lobby in the world, even in Vegas that I've ever seen that has a fully functional concert stage. And it's you, you, you're in a venue. Sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's not the Hilton Got lobby. It. Okay. And, I, and I, you I'm glad you for said the that. People that are there for Disneyland walking through with their kids in the circus of, I'm Man. glad you said that because every time someone's talked about Nam and said, well, this band's playing in the Hilton lobby, I've, I've imagined every Hilton lobby I've ever seen. And it's like, oh, well that kind of sucks, but no, turns <laughs> oh, out no, it's, it's not. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Okay. It's insane. It was really fun. The, the big standout, there were a couple. Okay. One was a corporate sort of a corporate band. That's not a corporate band called nineties rock show. Okay. And, I, I know the bass player a little bit through, through social media and she's awesome. They have a full string section. They can cover anything. Sure. And they, I think, I think they closed with do what they told you. And it was the most mind blowing. You would, you would have thought you were in a, in an arena. They, they just owned it. They came out, they, they found their way through the PA it's a weird thing because the guy has to mix four feet from the mains. Oh, it's wow. It's like a, a oh, weird rig. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, And yeah, they yeah. kind of pieced it together. That was nuts. Ragdolls were back, the the, the Aerosmith tribute band, yep. my friend and Ali Handel, who's amazing. They are just, every year they come back better. Um, String Revolution played. They won a Grammy last week, which was awesome. That's Janet Robbins' band. That's uh, um, Tommy Emmanuel. Uh, Janet Robin, who's just played with everybody. She was Lindsey Buckingham's guitar player, played with Meredith Brooks way back. Okay. Crazy talented solo artist, just awesome. But the fun, the fun talent, the fun bit was um, Stephen Glickman, who was in, on the Nickelodeon show Big Time Rush. Oh, sure. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He I was the Asian guy. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. He, he's, and they somehow outside the US, this band is still all over the place, still working. And everything else. He has a band. He does stand up comedy. He tours all over the all over the country. And our friend Buddy Gibbons played drums for him. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and so the moment was so much fun to see him come out on stage and basically do, you know, that was kind of the theme of the stages was like sort of 90s covers, 90s tribute bands. Okay, got it. Yeah. And he came out and just just it was so much fun. It was so cool. Oh, that's awesome. So that to summarize that that was the vibe the stages were fun the show itself the one thing i will say that the thumbprint i will put on this is that i saw more knockoffs this year than i've ever seen at an am show i saw like gibson like knockoff sgs but like plastic yep. knobs and, cheesy, yep. Yep. and like really bad knockoff 58s and stuff that were like not good ones not like the kind that you yeah. talk about like oh it's yeah, yeah, like, yeah yeah i'm yeah. talking about this is garbage like there was some really Bad yeah, but that's you, that needs to be out there. I like right. it, it. Like it's too bad that some people will wind up buying it, thinking that it's going to help them and and all of that. Right. But it, like that's what um, that's what happens in a mature market. So yeah, yeah it's it's a uh, it's it, they sort of have to take the compliment and then they will deal with the legalities. Yeah, of, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then they I shut mean, them down. Yeah, knockoffs yeah. of everything that you can think of, everything. Every Epiphone knockoffs all day long. Huh. And uh, it was crazy. But there were also some really cool boutique things too. Yeah. So yeah, it was good. New cool. product was definitely the focus of the show this year. I saw so much cool new stuff. And again, I don't see this show being what it was. I see it being something new and better. And what really you described to me that th after last year's episode where you came on and sort of DB Nam. Uh, we we kind of it was it was one of those ADHD episodes. It was kind of all over the place, and it was hard <laughs> to to get a picture really, of what you and me Nam was like. I know, and Paul was here too for that, yeah, right? Paul, you know, right, so right. like it was all of us. And uh, this, what you just did for us here, I, I mean, I appreciate the tangents that we took. I mean, obviously, there's a little bit of the ADHD thing that happens uh, anytime. That's who we are. Dave. That's who we are, right? Yeah, exactly. You know that going in, but 
it, the what the picture you painted is actually very clear in my mind, and I I hope it's clear in the minds of of everyone uh, who's listening here of what Nam is now, and it, what you described is something I want to go to, like going to see that you know all the glitz. I, that's I, it gets old really fast, yeah, and you and you that. can't make connections and personal connections when it's all very sort of arm's length. That's not exciting for me. I want to be able to go and like meet the guy who made this thing and, you know, was up late last night tweaking the last little bits of it so that it would work really well on the show floor. That's what I go to these kinds of things to see or meet the people that are going to be making this stuff next year. Right. Like that. Yes. The the future is bright. I, I will say it was, it was fun. It, it felt very, uh, promising Good. and we the fact that there were new products and to connect with people that i hadn't seen in so long and to see people come back to show to yeah. see vendors and manufacturers back even downsized really is the barometer for me uh because it's my year you know yeah. nam is 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 my business and i've been Correct. doing it you know, yeah. 40 this was my 40th show wow so it where was can, really exciting. Where can people find you if uh, if they if they want to contact you directly, Dan? If yeah, unless Dan, if, unless you don't want them to contact you directly, in which case feedback on, at gitgabpodcast. Only you can contact me, Dan. That'll so, work. Yeah, that'll yeah work. it's DanielEast.net is my website. Great. And uh, my if my background, my sort of CV is on LinkedIn, which is just Daniel East. It's in slash Daniel we'll, East. We'll put links to both of those in the yeah. Uh, in the show and then I post sure. stuff on socials on yeah. at East. It's at East D is for music kind of stuff, which is not really, you know, odds and ends and yeah. uh, at the mix doctor for mixing stuff. I will tell you one thing that I do have going on now. That's really cool is I'm back. Uh, last time we talked, I talked about being a power station with, uh, yeah. with this band and uh, we were back on Saturday to continue this record nice. and uh, we'll be back. We'll be back this week. I go back. We're, we're full tilt into making this record now. So uh, I'm really excited about that. It's going to be really, really cool. That's awesome. Really right? good music coming. Yeah, really I good can't. music. All barometers of Nam, gear, music being made, yeah. feeling like there's action again. That's great. It's good. I can't wait to hear the music. Thanks for coming and visiting us again, Dan. It is a pleasure to get to talk to you, my friend. Hey, um, before you go, do you have three words of uh, of advice, perhaps, to uh, share with our audience of musicians here? I do always be performing. That's good advice.